The KJ-600 is the Chinese Navy's future carrier-based airborne early warning and control aircraft, or AWACS for short. Once it enters service, it will act as a long-range detector and mobile command center for Chinese carrier air forces. The KJ-600 first flew in mid-2020. At least six airframes are in various stages of testing. Most of these are flying prototypes serving various roles, although at least one of these is likely to be a static airframe for land testing. Amid the increasing frequency of flight tests over the years, the KJ-600 is likely to be on the verge of low-rate initial production, which would fit together well with the fitting out and anticipated sea trials and aviation trials in the near future. Of China's newest aircraft carrier, the Type 003 Fujian. As of mid 2023, the Fujian is China's only carrier with aircraft catapult, otherwise known as a catobar carrier, which stands for catapult assisted takeoff, barrier arrested recovery. Additional catobar carriers are expected to be built in the coming years. Even if the timeline for their production is unknown at the stage, China's People's Liberation Army Navy, or the PLAN, also has two ski jump aircraft carriers, which do not have catapults. One of the benefits of the Fujian's catapults is the ability to launch a wider variety of different aircraft under a greater range of conditions than the ski jump carriers. Consequently, the Type 003 Fujian's air wing will be far more diverse than its predecessors, and will include the J-35 stealth fighter jet, as well as a catapult-enabled variant of the J-15 flying shark. A key component of this air wing, also made possible by the Fujian's catapult, is the KJ-600 airborne early warning and control aircraft. Or AWACS for short, the AWACS is one of the most important force multipliers for a modern air force, and a fixed-wing version operating from a carrier is far more capable than a helicopter equivalent operating in the same place. At present, the world's only fixed-wing carrier-based AWACS in service is the E-2 Hawkeye, developed by the U.S. company Northrop Grumman. It is operated by the U.S. Navy and several other navies, including that of Japan and France. China is developing this critical technology for its naval air forces with the KJ-600, since the Chinese AWACS has not yet entered service. Actual footages are rare, so we will be mainly showing the U.S. Navy's E-2 Hawkeye that serve a similar function. In terms of the role that the KJ-600 will play in the future air wing of the Fujian, it will be there to dramatically extend the carrier's radar range, especially when it comes to spotting low-flying objects or even surface warships. So this means improved battle space and battlefield awareness for both the carrier air wing and the carrier task force itself. It will also serve as a battle space manager. Controllers on board the KJ-600 will direct aircraft as needed and sustain a mobile command and control center for highly coordinated missions. Data provided by the KJ-600's radar signals and other passive sensors will be linked back to other aircraft and surface warships. To become real-time information, they can use. Another possibility is that the KJ-600 can function as a central data fusion and rebroadcasting node for a wider system of systems in integrated warfare. Based on satellite photos, the KJ-600 has extended wingspan of 24.4 meters and a length of 18.4 meters. Which is comparable to the E-2, and consistent with the need for compactness of a carrier-based aircraft. 
it has a configuration similar to the E2 family, which is not a surprise, given that both planes essentially serve the same function. The KJ600 has a high wing design, where wings are mounted on the upper fuselage. It is powered by two turboprop engines. An aerial refueling probe has not been seen as of yet, but could be added in the future to extend mission radius and endurance. A rotating radar dome or rotodome is mounted above the fuselage. Total crew number for the KJ-600 is expected to be at least five, with a pilot, a co-pilot, and at least three mission console operators. The turboprop engines are the six-bladed WJ-6C, the same turboprop that has powered the Y-9 transports, anti-submarine, and electronic warfare aircraft. A catapult launch bar on the nose landing gear confirmed the KJ-600 is intended for launch from a cattle bar carrier. A rear Y-shaped recess in the rear fuselage and what appears to be part of a tailhook points to the presence of a Y-shaped tailhook for arrested recovery. Wing fold lines appear to be present in past photos pointing to foldable wings to save space on carrier deck and hangars. There has been so far no visual evidence to suggest the KJ-600 has undergone catapult launch or arrested landing test from land-based naval catapult test sites, which the Chinese Navy has available. However, the key features seen in past photos strongly allude to the plane's carrier purpose. It is also highly possible that catapult testing have occurred without being captured on film or photos, which is totally plausible given the high degree of PLA operational secrecy. The KJ-600's primary radar remains unknown, but it is certainly to be an active, electronically scanned array, or ASAR for short, which is the leading standard for air search radar systems used by the military. ASAR radar is already a mature technology for the Chinese military industrial complex. It is already in use on China's air warfare destroyers and 4.5 and 5th generation fighters. The radar's frequency band is likely to be S or L band, which is fairly standard for AWAC and would fulfill the air search function well. The KJ-600's rotodome radar appears to be a single-sided array. A rotodome radar configuration with a single-sided array is different from the three-sided radar dome seen on other Chinese AWACS with three radar arrays, like the KJ-500 and the KJ-2000. This may reflect an emphasis on the size of the array, and therefore the sensitivity of the array, over the benefits of 360-degree surveillance. The US Navy's E-2 Hawkeye also uses a rotating, single-sided array, the KJ-600's radar systems and avionics are likely to be the most recent and most advanced the Chinese industry has to offer, keeping in mind that Chinese radar technology has made vast progress in terms of materials and software over the last decade. In addition to the primary rotodome radar, a large nose radar points to the presence of a nose radar of some sort. The outward similarity between the KJ-600 and the E-2 Hawkeye is undeniable. There have been insinuations or even claims in the Western defense media that the KJ-600 is reverse-engineered or even copied from the E-2. Much of these claims arise from the very similar airframe and subsystems of the two aircraft. There are obvious differences in key external features, including in the shape of the fuselage, the tail configuration, nose geometry, landing gear, and small differences in overall dimensions. 
The combination of these differences makes it highly unlikely that the KJ600 was reverse engineered or copied from the E2. The KJ600 is likely to be influenced by the design of the E2, but only at a surface level. Given the similarity emission requirements between the KJ600 and the E2, it is likely the optimal basic design for the two planes would be similar, even if both designers try their best to customize their designs for the need of their own forces. You can see the same pattern in stealth fighter design globally, with the US F-22 and F-35, the Chinese J-35, and the Korean KF-21 all sharing similar basic features to achieve stealth requirements. We know the PLA Navy prefers mature and proven systems with low risk, as opposed to revolutionary systems with a high risk of delays and failure. As such, the basic airframe and configuration are based on the most widely used and the most successful over the past decades, which is that of the E-2 and the proposed Soviet Yak-44. It is the option that carries the lowest risk. Nevertheless, pursuing a mature configuration would still necessitate the clean sheets design of the engines, the landing gear, the arresting gear, the internal space and the cockpit, to say nothing of the necessary development of the radar, passive sensors, mission consoles, data links and flight controls. So while the KJ-600 may be influenced by the E-2, there is only so much insight from observing the exterior of a mature airframe. You still have to make everything on the airframe and inside the airframe yourself. A number of development milestones remain for the KJ-600. These include land-based launches from catapults and land-based arrested landing. After that, the next major test will be carrier-based catapult launches and carrier-based arrested recovery. These achievements will depend on the Fujian aircraft carrier achieving sufficient readiness for sea trials and aviation trials in time. The KJ-600 is not believed to be able to launch from the ski jumps of the PLAN's Stobar carriers, the Liaoning and the Shandong. It may be too heavy to take off using its own power, even with a ski jump. However, the possibility of deploying the KJ-600 on the Stobar carriers and potentially launching them with a reduced payload of fuel cannot be ruled out at this stage. The entry into service of the KJ-600 could occur around the same time as the commissioning of the Fujian, or even preceding it a little bit. The acceptance of the KJ-600 sometime before the commissioning of the Fujian would allow for the pilot and the crew training to begin early. This would reduce the downtime before the Fujian becomes ready for combat. The KJ-600, the J-35 and the catapult-capable J-15 fighters are well on the way to forming the air wing of China's Type 003 Fujian aircraft carrier. China's naval aviation capability will be due for a huge uplift in the next few years, at least in terms of quality. The increase in quantity, on the other hand, will require additional cattle bar carriers and greater production of carrier-based aircraft.